Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and we've got all of our favorite guys here. It is time for our somewhat annual audio masters roundtable, and we've got Cliff Zellman and Jordan Reynolds and Uncle Roy and Andrew Feliciano is going to be joining us too, and we're going to have a great time. If you've got questions about home voiceover studio technology or just general stuff in the voiceover biz, these are the guys you want to ask. Right, George? Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. Biz is what we're here to talk about. And old Roy. All right. <laughs> I'm the senior member of the group. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Almost. Anyway, Voice Over Body Shop, our Audio Masters Roundtable, right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super-secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, greetings there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Come on, get Jeff in there. Okay, Where's that button? B S. There you go. Close enough. Well, it's uh it's God, it's almost Thanksgiving for crying out loud. And for those of you watching this next Friday, it already was, and you're probably out shopping or something like that. Uh, but tonight we're doing our audio masters round table. And, you know, there are a lot of guys out there that say, oh, I know about home studios. Well, here are, we've got four guys joining us tonight who are the experts when it comes to audio, more importantly, the audio you send out. And they're the ones that'll say, don't fuck with it, guys. Uh, but let's introduce our guests and let's get into the meat of the matter. And if you have a question at any time, throw it in the chat room in either our, uh, our Facebook uh, chat or in YouTube. We have access to both. And Jeff Holman is uh, taking those questions down. And I'm sure as we keep discussing things, you'll probably have some questions, too, and comments. And that's what we want to hear from all of you. So let me introduce our panel Starting first um, with Cliff Zellman. Cliff, come on in here. Hey, guys. All right, howdy, Cliff. howdy from Dallas, Texas. All right. Cliff is Director of Talent Development at ACM Talent Automotive Division. Yes, sir. It's uh, going on two years. We've had a lot of fun, a lot of challenges, as, as we all have. And automotive was hit pretty hard. But uh, the floodgates are starting to open up. I woke up this morning to... <laughs> 15 of them 15 of them ladies and gentlemen um but yeah 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 great to be here and haven't seen you guys in a long time so yeah i'm thrilled i'm thrilled we miss you I'm joining back. us from yes from bloomfield new jersey is the one and only uncle roy yokelson uncle roy how you doing today home of the vo bbq yeah every all our listeners are invited next october 8th and 9th it's going to be a mob scene because the borders will be open and half of Canada will be here and Armin will be singing and Hugh Edwards will be playing drums. It's going to be great. And Dan and George can sleep in the attic like they did a couple of years ago. <laughs> here we're all ready for Thanksgiving. And there you have it. Yeah. Uncle Roy is a voiceover coach, 
uh, producer of demos at Killer Demos and a home studio <laughs> expert at Antland Productions. And oh, wait, show it again, show it again. And an Emmy Award winning sound designer. Right. And I only have one voice arts award, so I, I'm trying to yeah, catch up to Jay Michael. <laughs> okay. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, how, how much are those Emmy Awards going for on eBay these days, Uncle Roy? I know. Once I got uh, once I got Val Kelly's uh, Mavo Award, I said, hey, anybody want to buy a slightly used Emmy? Because I don't need it anymore. I got this. That's that's a much better one. <laughs> that's a nice one. Yeah, that's not one of those one in a million shot doc things you want. Uh, let's see here. Joining us from just across town is voice actor, audio ninja, celebrity impressionist, and demo producer, Jordan Reynolds. Jordan, welcome to the show. Hey, once again. what's up, guys? How's it going? It's, it's been so see. long. It has been. Yeah, and you're just right. You're just down the street for. I know, I know, I know. But it would probably take me an hour to get there anyway, in uh, good old rush hour traffic. But yeah, it just I am here on a camera. Okay, all right. I'm excited. And uh, joining us also from from Burbank, oh, actually it's Studio City from Voice Tracks West, is Andrew Feliciano. Andrew, welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to, glad to be here. Glad to yeah. be joining the crew. Absolutely. Uh, Andrew is the owner and general manager, and I guess the receptionist at Voice Tracks West. <laughs> Makes good coffee, yeah. too. Yeah. Yes, all, all of that. Uh, all yeah, I do, I do and it the all. Tech. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, engineer, been an engineer 20 years, and, uh, you know, keep the wheels turning here at Voice I Tracks like West. I like your prison too. outfit. That's really cool. Oh, isn't it good? Yeah. <laughs> let you yeah. out? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I went and I'm in, I'm in my cell. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> my colorful cell. Yeah. Hey, they gave you two colors. Uh, yes, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, let's get into the meat of the matter here. Um, you're all experts on voice over audio, which by the way, don't confuse it with recording music, which I find a lot of people are doing, you know, and as we, I'm sure as you're talking to a lot of our, our clients out there that are, we're trying to help them get their audio better. They're all stuck on, well, I got to have this piece of equipment. I got to have that piece of equipment. Cause that's going to make me read better. I don't quite get that. Uh, but is there any, let's go around the horn here. Is there any new tech that, that you're really thrilled about that could actually help your average voice actor? Let's, let's start with Andrew, because you're new, you get to go first. Uh, yeah. I, I wonder if this, uh, I don't know if this is new tech and I haven't tried it yet. Um, uh, I think, I think George might be interested well, that, in this. That would qualify as new then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is new. Uh, um, I'm about to test a tiny, um, air conditioning unit, uh, for, for a booth we have here. Um, oh. it was, it was aimed, it's called the zero breeze. Uh, it's aimed at like camping or small rooms and things like that. And, uh, it's this big and it's a proper air conditioning unit for a small room. And, uh, uh we have a small booth here that, that actors come use. That's kind of like a home studio booth. And, uh, I'm going to try cooling, um, that booth with this, uh, with this small AC unit. So, um, uh, more mm -hmm. to come on that. I don't have results on it on, on it yet. But are you uh, going to pipe it, or will it be sitting inside the booth? Uh, outside the booth, um, yeah. just to keep quiet. Um, uh -huh. so the, the trick is, can you sit it on top of the booth with some isolation, and you won't hear it inside the booth? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, so, so that's what's the testing. technology in this thing? Is it a swamp cooler? Is it using no? It's, it's effect? no. Is it's it a using... it's a it's a standard um, uh, compressed uh, compressor air wow. conditioning yeah. unit. Um, yeah. And actually does, I mean, they, they've actually said, it's like, oh, turn it around and use it as a heater. Um, you know, and just, uh, um, you know, just reverse the pipes of what you're putting into the, Do you have to space. exhaust out, uh, out of a window or. Yeah. So you, yeah, there's three, there's the intake and then, um, and then the cool air and then the hotter that it blows out. So, um, so it's kind I'm, of like a proper, a, a proper unit, just really tiny. Um, you know, I'm sure collectively we cannot express the importance of yeah. proper ventilation in a booth, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. we hear people, you know, they're sweating. I've been in for 10 minutes. I'm sweating. That's not a way to run a business. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's expensive. Um, so it would be a luxury item. Um, it's about a thousand dollars. So it's certainly not, it, you would be, so you're spending a lot of time in your booth and it'd be worth the money to do it. Um, <laughs> well yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Uh, is, um, and, uh, you know, and then even if you, you hook up your, house ac you know which i'm sure some people do and we have that here but then you're running like a giant you know huge btus to cool a tiny little room so anyway that, cool. that's a new piece of tech that uh um you know i'm kind of excited about right now yeah Great. we Jordan. open the door to the booth to yeah. to uh cool it down oh yeah, yeah i mean you just got to keep doing this with your door 
There yeah. we go. It's there. Anyway, no. uh, Jordan, what's what's new on your radar for tech? Uh, honestly, with everyone having to work from, well, I mean, there was already plenty of us who were fortunate enough to work from home, right? That that when the pandemic hit as voice actors, we like, if you built your career in a non-major market, you're like, oh, I have to have a home studio. So uh, to make a living. So you are, we were ready to go there, but there's a lot of local LA voice actors who are not so much and they freaked out. Yeah. But what comes with home recording is environment, right? Like you have not only our, our acoustics and all that, you have to deal with how does your voice sound in a space, but the noise that gets into your space can vary. There's people living in apartments and then especially mm -hmm. during quarantine, everyone is like in their house, in the apartment, everyone's making noise with their AC, their fridge. So I, uh, I've been really digging through not everything, but a lot of noise removal tools. But what the biggest, the thing I'm most excited about over the past two years is, uh, noise live noise removal so not just like oh let's let's remove the noise after i've recorded it but i can do it live now and i literally have it on right now on my mic i'm using the the uad plugin this it's a horrible name uh c suite c vox um i think it's cedar it, it, it what's that <laughs> i think it's from cedar c-e-d-a-r oh did they like buy the rights from it because i don't even see cedar written on this plugin I, oh it is yeah. he had tiny letters designed by cedar yeah you're right but anyway, so I'm running that live right now. So because I have AC on and that'd stuff. be good for a source connect session then. Yeah. And, but, and it's, it's got two simple knobs, but I have to say, I haven't done an AB test yet, but I think it might be better than isotope voice denoise. Like you can, you can really push it hard without getting as many artifacts of when mm -hmm. you push voice denoise hard. I love that plugin, but this one as a live plugin is just, it's insane. Like it is incredible incredibly transparent I, and there's I also i can't remember that, the yeah. mic model but there is a mic that actually has noise removal built into it i i, I want to test it I, um, I don't know how good it is for voiceover but if anyone remembers the name of that mic yeah I have in one. the chat excellent all right did you get one george how much it's is on it the shelf somewhere <laughs> it's on the shelf how much somewhere. is it george? 300 but yeah 350 350 mm. it, has like bruce, it. Bruce, it has bruce, bruce free it has bruce free noise in it oh the mic i don't know how much the mic is but the the plugin that I'm talking about from mm -hmm. you have to have a UAD Apollo audio interface, otherwise you cannot use it. Um, but you can either use it live, like I'm using it now, or run it as a plugin afterwards on your audio. And does it render, or is it? Bucks. The, yeah. the, can, and you can actually render it and save it. You run it in your console mm -hmm. and live in your console, like as, as a in you know. As but a you, live can use, you can use it as a plugin after the fact, though. That yeah. too. Yes. You have both options. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Uncle good. Roy, yeah. What's what's new on your uh, radar with tech? No, I just wanted to comment on the uh, we're you know we're not recording music at, uh, comment that George made before or Dan. Um, you call Sweetwater. They're not really <laughs> in the voiceover business, but they <laughs> no, think they not. are, <laughs> and maybe maybe they're growing to be. Or you go to uh, Guitar Center or you know Banjo Emporium, whatever you mm -hmm. guys call it. <laughs> Um, and they want to sell you a microphone. They want to sell you like a Rode NT1A because they have a lot left over because nobody wants them. Um, so you have to be careful. Yeah, my Sweetwater guy, he really knows. Well, he doesn't. He's not in the trenches like we are. You know, some of us have been doing this for 45 years, right, Cliff? That is true, brother. That's right. And between the two of us, we can hear in stereo. That's right. Your left ear, my right ear, we're in great shape. <laughs> yeah. So just just be careful. I, you know, um, I do like the Isotope plugins. I bought mm -hmm. I bought uh, RX nine just because. Not that nine is better than eight, better than six, better than you know. Um, it's as far as the standard one. I think it's the same as six, seven, eight. I think they're all the same. Um, if I needed the advanced for film work, uh, clothes rustling and, and wind and, and it has other tools like that. So I like the RX, I like the isotope products and they, they're having their black Friday stuff now. And what I don't like about, I like waves, but they only give you one license. You have to juggle it. Between I, iLock. Yeah. It was <laughs> iLock or release it to the cloud, pick it up on your other. Isotope, Isotope, I've got it on five computers. Yeah. They don't care. Like fab filters. Yeah. 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 And as long as it's me. So I like the isotope stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. like we all do. 
Oh, yeah. Cliffy, what about you? Well, um, two things, um, and they're both hardware. One of them is the SSL6, which is an interface. Um, it has the SSL uh, high and low EQs. It has a selectable bell. So it's basically a graphic, and you can kick in the bell to you know uh, affect the neighboring frequencies. Um, it has a built-in G bus on the output. So that's mm. very, very cool. That's very cool. Um, I love SSL products and it's kind of expensive. It's about 13, 1400 bucks. Um, I don't know how good it is for maybe podcasting, but, uh, as far as just, you know, getting your stuff to sound great, um, of course, after your environment, um, I, I'm really excited about it. And and to sit behind a little mini SSL, I used to sit behind the 96 <laughs> input SSLs and, and to have this little one, it's got the same colored knobs. Uh, so it's, it's very sexy. Uh, the second thing that I got excited about is the UA Volt. And one of the reasons I got excited about that is they have incorporated the old URI, U-R-E-I uh, 610 preamps. And uh, for those old guys, uh, we know that those 610 preamps are, pretty hot they sound really good it also has they have a version that has a built-in uh they call it the 76 but it's actually an emulation of the yuri 1176 my only question about it is it's got a preset six to one compression ratio so that means a little you know a little bit of gain and you can get an awful lot of compression so you kind of got to be careful about that um but it also has uh, four selectable uh, attack times and release times to incredibly fast, which could help with sibilance or slow, which could make your sibilance worse. Cliff, but, who do you think would want a six to one compression ratio? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty hardcore. When I'm doing uh, voiceover, I never go more than two to one or three to one. You know, yeah. and three to I one know, to me is like hard sell. It's of. pretty hard. And if you're really hitting that mic pre and you're really triggering that six to one, it's going to sound like this. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I think that, you know, they know what they're doing. So, you know, you'll find that that sweet spot. And I think it, it could be neat. But that SSL, I mean, I just might get one just to, could be like the MSG of processing. Yeah. Just you just need. A, a micro, a tiny, micro tiny Otherwise, days. you're running around the, the Chinese restaurant for three and a half hours. Right, and it's going to give you a headache. So, yeah. yeah. Does the SSL have the producer eject button like the big console <laughs> did? I don't know, but you can put it in. I think you, I think you could just it's, unscrew it's one. An accessory? Yeah, the, uh, the producer defeat knob. You know, when you think it's out, it needs just that little extra hit that button. Yeah. That was the, you know, the quad speaker button that was long disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> Now, no, now, no, now, yes. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Now we got the mix. But yeah. I really like those two. I think, I think Yuri stuff's great, you know, and it's cheap. It's like 350 bucks. Right. Um, but save your receipt because it may be a little bit hardcore for the just the everyday uh, VO person to hit it too hard. I really want to hear what that six to one. Yeah. You know, yeah. With, and, I, and that's where I want to, I want to gravitate to next here is that, you know, we, we're all getting audio from people. Uh, mm -hmm. especially if you're producing and you're getting home studio audio, what are the biggest mistakes or the biggest problems that each one of you are experiencing when somebody sends you some audio for production? Cliff? Environment. Number one mistake. Thank you. Thank the you very number much. Number one mistake is, you know, we see all the mics that you're using. They're all great. You know, we see that. That was my dog, by the way, not me. Um, <laughs> we see... Uh, you know, all the, uh, everything that they've got, all the hardware and stuff, which is real easy to get. You go to Banjo Emporium, you lay down your credit card, you can have anything you want. Sweetwater, two years, no interest. You can have whatever you want. But really what I hear more than anything is woo, 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 going on. You know, that 200, 300 woo, woo. ceiling fan. <laughs> no, just the, 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 the uh, sympathetic frequencies within the booth or within their environment. Yeah. And, you know, you start cutting that stuff out, try to get a little transparency. But I really think the biggest, my biggest pet peeve is too low, recording too low. And, uh, and just to pardon my French, we're all adults here. I'm going to say it, a shitty environment, you know? Yeah, I, I think there's no question. I think people don't really understand what the environment is supposed to sound like. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the people who are just getting into voiceover have no experience at recording. And they're yeah. like, well, microphone, record. Oh, okay. But that's not the way it is. And then they go on YouTube and it's like, well, here's how you build a booth and here's, you know, get a, uh, 
you know, all these panels and spend $10,000 and do this and, you know, and then pray that you continue doing voiceover. And one of the big misconceptions is when they're setting their recording level, if they send in audio and you tell them, well, your noise floor is too high and, and the file looks like this. And it's, well, <laughs> you have to raise your gain. Yeah, but then the noise comes up. <laughs> okay, it's the same. You know, it's called yeah. signal to noise ratio. The ratio doesn't change. No. Uh, my, so there's that low volume pet peeve. Mm -hmm. uh, the other pet peeve. I am so in love with my voice. I wearing headphones, and you can tell that I really I talking to a microphone for my. I love it. I love it. Um, so when that's I hear audio, cool. Uncle Roy, <laughs> what's, that, what's that? That sounded pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's my eighty nine dollar uh, killer uh, B mic, worker B, worker B. Um, but that sounds like the guy who did your intro, mm -hmm. and and you could just see the ends of every phrase was <laughs> ramped up. You know, <laughs> no offense to to whoever did that. Very, that was John Bailey, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was having fun doing that. That's on, why we had him purpose. do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, on purpose. But when you send me a sample that sounds like that, and you're wearing headphones that are too loud, so you're only speaking quiet, or they're too low, and you're shouting because you can't hear yourself in the headphones. I said, so you're going to yell at me now? You couldn't hear yourself in the headphone? Turn up your headphone game. <laughs> Right, yeah. everybody. Hello. <laughs> well, we try to teach people proper mic technique here, and then yeah. that's uh, why and people I'll keep always... coming back every week. And did you change? Hey, George, did you change this to something? Is this now we can do four inches instead. Now <laughs> you're still, you're still good with this, you're, right? You're, you're you're muted there, George. Well, because he's not saying anything. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I I've I'm broken here, it down here, into here, there. You here. go. Yeah. See, I've broken it down into. Thumbs up, a fist for if you're in a small one, and mahalo if you're in a larger room. Right. So that 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 seems to work for me. Yeah. Andrew, what what? Yep. I mean, you 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 run Voice Tracks West, and I you know I'm sure you get lots of audio from people from the outside that you've got to mix into projects. What are yeah, some I mean, of the it's... really stupid things you see? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, uh, they're they're yeah, listening. Yeah, most a lot of our stuff is is live, right? We'll do live sessions with people um, from home, you know, Source Connect, or, or or even now, you know, they're during the pandemic. It was, you know, you're they're doing a session, and uh, you know, Source Connect or even some of the other services would just get hammered, and so you know, some things move to where we were recording the Zoom while they were recording locally, and then we would take notes and match it up later, so we could get their their raw audio and not have to like deal with the dropouts um you know even with like source connect now or something like that um so related to that is then could we get room tone and and so you get some room tone that has a little <laughs> <sighs> yeah so a little room tone with some breathing in it um or uh room tone plus yeah or or, uh, or this was a good one or, um or, there was a um a room tone oh, let me oh, do that make oh make sure you leave the room um, cause, because, you know, because of that. And then, uh, um, so, so I kind of heard it, you know, uh, you know, got it after the fact, you know, left the room, closed the door, was talking to his friend in the room, mm -hmm. used the bathroom, uh, heard the toilet flush. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, just cause the booths are, you know, it kept stuff out, but that, you know, that sort of murmuring is sort of there. And so that was also not quite room to, there was enough in there to kind of make it work, but. Um, uh, so, and it's, uh, so just not realizing that, uh, you know, room tone is sort of, is really just silence, you know, just the sound of the room without you breathing. Um, and, uh, and just kind of not realizing how much gets picked up, um, you know, when you, um, are just sitting there or even just outside the booth. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, can be kind oh. of comical. Or when people send me a sample and they, they, uh, the, I say room tone followed by a 30 second read in all in one file and they separate, they send me room tone from a month ago that they've <laughs> normalized that they, you know, <laughs> normalized room tone. you know, and then they stick it on or they send me a separate thing. Here's my room tone. <laughs> I need it with the day you recorded it. I need the same recording session. It's very, yeah. where I did a lot of, done a lot of location recording and you're sitting there with the Nagra. And, and, you know, they're ready to rap and you stand up on your chair and you scream at the top of your lung, Quiet. one minute, you know, one minute tone. Everybody's just listening, you know, but it's, it's really, really, really important. 
Yeah. Yeah. One like, minute? Uncle Roy, why can't oh, yeah. one you minute? Are you oh, lucky? Yeah. You know how lucky you are to get one minute? I would get maybe <laughs> These 10 are all union guys on the set. They oh, better yeah, shut no, up. No. They know. When you the room what talk. are you saying, Jordan? Uh, for those who may not know, what, can you explain to the audience why it's so important? Because for, for voice actors that like room tone to them might just be, oh, it's my slate. And some people just, they have a, a slate file they put in all their auditions. And when they're asked to do room tone, they might think the same thing. Can you explain to them why it's important to do a fresh room tone with that exact recording? With every, with every recording, if you're doing an audio book, you can't, you can, you can do it wrong, but you want the room tone associated with the recording of that chapter. If you're going to be pasting in room tone, you don't want to hear a difference in level. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, you're going to put a high-pass filter. If you're going to do a little bit of noise reduction, it has to, the sample that you put in of the noise for the noise reduction has to be the sample that's going, you want to take out the same room tone or the same noise that's under your dialogue that same day. So you need that, that uh, room tone has to be the same day, same time as that recording. Yeah. yeah. You'd be amazed at how many times, you know, people send me samples and again, yeah, they send room tone and I'm like, just hit record. Don't talk for 10 seconds, read something and Hold then don't breath. talk for 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you can see no, well, that was edited guys. Yeah. We know we can see <laughs> things that you don't understand. And so don't try to fool us because it doesn't really matter because it's what your audio is going to sound like. There was a Facebook post. Somebody said, just record, be quiet, record 20 seconds in your room and then play it back really loud. And can you hear, no, that's not how we, I didn't address it. It was the stupidest comment. Somebody wanted to post room tone and put it in their website to say, this is an example of how quiet my room is. <laughs> I said, why bother the person that's going to be listening? It's going to be probably louder. Their system that they're listening on is going to be louder than I, your room I, tone. I guess that could be useful for an engineer, like if you oh, could download it. Cool. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> not no, really, but it has, no. but within, <laughs> within the sample. Yeah. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Yeah. 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 yeah you need yeah. the signal yeah. and you need the noise. Yeah. 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 Signal, noise. noise. In the same recording. Right. Yeah. And what is, and what is, is right. And what is signal? Signal is your voice. Your voice. Noise is Everything anything else. that's not your voice. So in case, in case you were wondering, yeah. once again, we're doing our somewhat annual audio masters round table. We've got Andrew Feliciano, Jordan Reynolds, Cliff Zellman, and uncle Roy joining George and I Thanksgiving tonight. edition. Thanks. That's right. Yeah. And everybody have a Super great Thanksgiving. <laughs> we'll get that chance to talk about that again too. Um, so let, let Jordan, did you, did you get in there and, uh, and give us your, your, uh, major mistake people make? Oh man. Um, Probably, I mean, I already agree with like its environment is is first and foremost. Um, mic distance, which you, you I, I love what you said, Dan. You're like bigger room, hang loose, small room, fist, and what was the other one? One thumb, if thumb thumbs up. It's so yeah. I like mean, a medium room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It is now. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest thing is because um, with more and more people recording from home than ever, the hang loose distance, which you know it. First of all, it varies like, you know, like if you take a six foot four dude versus a five foot tall woman there, this distance is going to be dramatically different. So I've never loved this as like, just do this because they might be up here if they have very tiny hands. But um, that makes a huge difference from either the this traditionally could be yeah about six to eight inches. But just getting in that four to six inch range makes a world of a difference in so many recordings um, when I'm consulting with, with, with talent to make the studio sound better. Yeah. But um, the Stay other thing in that range, Stay yeah, in that I, four to six range, you start moving proximity. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to manage. Not only that, the right. angle, because voiceover people think their job is to talk into a microphone, but that's, we have to have it off at what, 30 to 45 degree angle. So your mm -hmm. plosives go this way and the mic finds you this way. Peter yeah. Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. I don't hear a plosive. I, I don't use a pop screen. I, I mean, that's the other thing. Everybody uses pop screens. I have no pop screen. Yeah, you know, and the, and the fact is, is I tend to think that it, it's a psychological thing that it reminds people they're on a microphone and they have to therefore have to talk louder. So you know, I like having it so it's here. Yeah, and it's out of my field of vision, and I forget that it's there. It's like mm -hmm. playing. You don't play to the camera if you're oh. doing a scene with other people, unless you're doing a Tide commercial or something. 
Okay. In the studio so I, environment, oh. we, we use the uh, pop filter a little bit as a as a placement mechanism almost. Um, you know, well, we can place something kind of farther away if we think we uh, we need to. And that use kind a of, disc. Um, nylon that, disc. Use a nylon disc. You know, we, I mean, no, traditionally we would use the double ones, but we've been using metal the last couple of years. But I mean, just them down, but yeah, yeah. Separate from the microphone. Separate from the microphone. Yeah. 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 Or, I mean, it's like, I mean, essentially, right. you know, this, right. this, this guy right here. So, and, uh, and it depends on who, who the person is, right? If they're, if they're a novice, it's like a tool. If they're a pro, uh, it, you know, you could place the, the mic anywhere and they, and they place themselves, but, mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but yeah, anyway, so in the studio environment, that's, you know, it can be useful for that. Yeah. Once again, if you've got a question, throw it in one of the chat rooms that you may be associated with, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, or you're catching the smoke signals coming over the top of the hill, uh, and uh, ask your questions. We're going to get into uh, some of your questions, and there's some great ones already that I see. And we're going to take a quick break on our Audio Masters Roundtable, and we'll be right back after this. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Ah, that Thanksgiving dinner. And now that you've slept off that meal, it's time to go shopping for voiceover stuff at voiceoveressentials.com. They've cut the gimmicks and have put on sale just the products their customers love and buy the most. VoiceOverEssentials.com guarantees these are their best prices through the end of Black Friday weekend. Their Portabooth Pro 6.0, the premier desktop vocal booth. The Portabooth Pro is the first portable vocal booth made for professional voice performers. The Portabooth Plus, the real carry-on vocal booth you can actually carry on. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones. These studio monitoring headphones optimized for voice work, now even better. And the multicolor LED voiceover recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign, it's their exclusive voiceover recording sign. Sign up for their mailing list at the bottom of every page and never miss a deal at voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence the 17th. One of the things that I am most thankful for is a guy by the name of Patrick Tucker. Who's that? He wrote Secrets of Screen Acting. And it's a book that changed my life, both as an on-camera talent and as a voiceover talent. Uh, I had a chance to do a podcast with him, 300 episodes of a podcast that will add to your knowledge base like crazy, whether you're doing on-camera, voiceover, or both. It usually sells for $279, but for the next week, week and a half or so, it's yours for $149. So that's nearly 50% off, but I'm going to sweeten the deal. I'm going to give you the actual book. Secrets of Screen Acting, and the audiobook for Secrets of Screen Acting. All of those things will benefit both your on-camera work if you do that, and certainly your voice work if that's all you do. Go to voheroes.com slash cyber. That's voheroes.com slash cyber. It's a limited time offer. Do so soon, and I hope that helps. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we're back in VOBS for our Thanksgiving week Audio Masters Roundtable with Uncle Roy, Andrew, Jordan, Cliff, and George and I. Anyway, George, you had a question you wanted to ask about uh, that we wanted to talk about, about a new computer. You want to fire that one out there? Oh, yeah. Um, this is always a discussion, but I just saw it come up today again. So I thought I'd pose it here. Um, when you guys buy a new computer, do you 
go for broke? Do you max that sucker out? The most memory you can afford, the most, you know, storage, everything to maximize its life over as long a period as possible? Or do you find that, you know, nowadays just a little upgrade from the base model is really all you need and you're going to be fine. And again, I'm going to ask this question from the context of what a voice actor would need to know versus a producer running 178 tracks of virtual instruments. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to take that one on first? I will. I'll, I'll jump in. I think any, any Mac, as is, right out of the box, is going to be more than enough than you need. Uh, working two, three, four tracks. Uh, as far as storage goes, you know, uh, working storage is good, but I mean, good Lord, you guys, y'all can buy terabyte drives for a hundred bucks now, you know, so storage shouldn't really be that much of an issue. Uh, if I buy a computer, I try to get the best that I can afford, but you know, uh, I got no problem locking up nine terabytes in my system right now. But, uh, you know, I, I really think that any Mac out of the box is, is going to be fine for you. Anybody else want to tech, take that one on? Well, I would say, um, and most people know I'm a, mostly a PC guy, although I do have my lovely mm -hmm. MacBook Pro 2015 over here running Big Sur. Great, great runs, unit. Runs like a top. Mm -hmm. 16 gigs of RAM is enough. Uh, but you need, you need storage if you're going to save everything or if you're doing big projects like audiobooks or e-learning that that if you want to save the wave file and the mp3 it's going to eat up some space uh the new i think the new minimum would be 16 gigs of ram mm -hmm. eight, eight used to be the minimum <laughs> 16 if you can afford 32 go for it it's going to run so much smoother faster and you only want uh solid state drives ssd um a terabyte is good 500 might be enough if you have then another external you know if you have another terabyte or a four terabyte you know they, they are pretty cheap now mm -hmm. so but uh pc mac it really doesn't matter <laughs> yeah it's what you're raised on yep yeah i mean why, why do we recommend max one you know to me it's always like you plug it in and it works it's easier I, yeah. I I hate I hate to say it. I'm I love PCs. That's my preferred platform. Mm -hmm. But um, the troubleshooting. I'm sure George can go on and on about this too. Uh, the troubleshooting with PCs uh, is just it's unpredictable. It it can be amazing, uh, and uh, and just work, or it can be I don't know what's happening. And and the Macs um, just seem to work. A and I say that as a voice actor at home, it co only comes up if you're just recording. Um, it's fine if, but it comes up when you're doing Zoom, Skype, Source Connect, recording, like different things at the same time. Then it's, uh, um, uh, yeah. Then that just Max uh, I I've found are just easier, even though I myself will use a PC. They um, recognize you know, things day. instantly. I've got a Yamaha AGO uh, six that I use. I plug it in, no drivers, nothing. Comes up on my list of choices. There it is. Mac knows it's there. You know the software's in the in the unit itself it tells me what the mac is and it works perfectly i wish apple would just quit reinventing and you know releasing new os now you got the m1 okay we're working through the you got to put rosetta to make mm -hmm. rx work and all those workarounds uh why don't they test these things first and you know in a, in a blink of an eye they're going to release the next version and what else are they going to take away or somebody told me they put back the ethernet uh port on on a, a new mac or something like that so quit taking stuff away mm -hmm. we, we need usb ports we yes. need ethernet but they want to sell you uh adapters yep that, that's their new business so the dongle company yeah, yeah. Qu question for oh, yeah. For, yeah. for george because you, you probably work you've worked with more pc users than i have um is it at least back in windows 7 and i think it's still in windows 10 has it gotten any better and i wonder if windows 11 addresses it but for if you wanted to, for example, have Zoom use your your Focusrite Scarlet as your mic, and then also record yourself in Reaper at the same time, it would not let you do that, right? Or does it now without freaking out and be like, no, you must pick one app at one time. Or Max doesn't care. You can record on five different things at the same time. Yeah, do PCs still have that problem. I think Andrew's a better it's, one. To yeah, yes. So it's so the the problem really is that. Um, 
Apple invested in this core audio thing, which is just how they do audio, right? And it's sort of it, and, it, and it's sort of the master of all things audio. Um, uh, PCs have their own kind of thing, but the pro audio version of that is this ASIO, and yeah. ASIO is single channel. It's not multi. Ch- no, or yeah. that's not no multi. What is it? Multi. Uh, Red. <laughs> like the two things can use it at once. I'm not. I'm not the word. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. But but and and so and so that really is the problem that you use sort of like the Scarlet is a pro thing. And it's gonna you're gonna use ASIO or you're gonna use a piece of software that's ASIO, and then nothing else can use that because of the ASIO does not support um, multiple devices using um, a driver. And so either ASIO needs to fix that, which they should. Um, or Windows needs to fix it and build their own, like, you know, complete audio support um, system. What about WDM drivers? Because that, that's an alternative a lot. So it is, except like Pro Tools can't use WDM. You know, Pro sure. Tools has but to use that. Or Source Connect. Using. Source Connect can't use it? All right. Yeah, Source Connect can't use it either. So um, oh. so that's, so and yeah, so, that, so that's, that's what, for me, it's sort of, it's like, can I make it work? Can Roy make it work? Um, can George or you? Yes, like we can make it work. Multiple devices, virtual audio devices, um, and uh, you can, but on the Mac, it's just sort of just plug it in, connect Zoom, Skype, Twisted Wave, and Pro Tools all at the same time and go for it. Yeah. There is an app for the PC called, it's the funniest name ever, Voice Meter Banana. Uh, yeah, and that's great. That's that's a workaround. It's a ver- it that's is. doing virtual, yes. virtual devices. And it's you like can flower work for that? Yeah, yeah, that that you can that that can work as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I tell uh, you, we did not get along. Not um, Flower and I did. No, not it's not. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, anytime there's a virtual sound driver layer between the actor and their DAW, it's a yeah. friggin' disaster. Man. Yeah, it is. You but just, I suggest I using it for um, like Zoom and not Source Connect, but like Zoom sure. or things because there's so many like as, as a voice actor, the, so many of my sessions are like a lot of them are just Zoom now. Mm-hmm. They don't. They, You're they don't recording on your end. What's that? You're recording on your end. Yep, I record on my end. You and send they it out and transfer. Zoom. I have a few clients who still dial me on my my phone patch, which is virtual. I just have a Skype phone number. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, and then of course, plenty of people record me on Source Connect. But when was the last time cool. anybody did an IP DTL session? With me? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody on this oh. panel? I have one client that that does it, and it's like once or twice a year. But I don't. I I canceled my account. It's a great product. But yeah, I thought um, it was a great product. But I know a lot of talent who use it regularly. They're like, oh, I have all, all my clients. I'm like, mm. it's there's just all, it's all over the map. Also, there's also connection open. And I mm-hmm. think the only downside of that is not enough people have it and not enough clients have it and not enough studios have it. But Randy Morrison uh, will work with the studios and you know get them some free, yeah, well. some free stuff, free licenses for a while, let them spread the word and get let the voiceover people uh, because you don't have to be hardwired. Nothing wrong with being hardwired to your uh, router. You should be, but it also works on Wi-Fi. It works. It doesn't need as much TLC, mm-hmm. and theoretically, it's better quality. The, but I can jump in on sort of what open and zero is latency, and why it's, according and, to and, Randy. Go ahead. And why Andrew? it's great is that it's closer to Source Connect, like the audio quality is closer to Source Connect, mm-hmm. but the, the user at the other end doesn't need to have an account or have um, have, have to purchase Source Connect. Like the, mm-hmm. the studio or the person wanting to hire them or use them can send them a link to sort of go into a session. And so then it's like Anyone quality of Source Connect, but, but without having to buy it versus Source Connect now where the quality is, or IPDTL, where the quality is like, eh, you know, miles may vary. Yeah. Um, and well, uh, um, but it's very easy. Part of the um, initial uh, appeal was the very, very, very low latency that musicians can theoretically play together in real time at the same time. It's just a theory, though. Yeah, <laughs> it does not work. Put, Categorically, does put, put Randy on your show, and we'll see. We have how okay. Long, how many times have we had Randy <laughs> invited good, on the show? He's a good guy. Yes. No, he's a good guy. But I mean, there are inherent latencies in using internet. In any, uh, there's a quality of service right. issue. You have no control over that. Unless we live in a superconductor world, you can do it on everything a land. Has latency. You can do it on land. Like if mm-hmm. the, if if the uh, on the hall, hell yeah, man. Yeah, two millisecond, one millisecond latency all day. Right. Be awesome. yeah. right. But over the internet, over switches and nodes and peering and all that crap, it just it just yeah. doesn't I mean, work. We had a client last week who was like. Well, I'm talking to somebody in Santiago, Chile, and I'm here in LA, and there's a 10 second latency. <laughs> can, can you fix that? Uh, 
Well, that's <laughs> that's when we call Robert Marshall over at Source Connect and figure that stuff out. Uh, here's a question. Uh, Paul Stefano has a great question here, and I think this is something hey, that Paul. will make a hey, very Paul. good discussion. He says, when a studio casting agent sends an audition that says, TLM 103 preferred uh. or similar, are they really t turning people away who don't use that model? I mean, I, I tend to find that, well, I know, yeah, they want everybody to sound similar, but every voice is different. Every room is different. And I would imagine that most engineers can't really tell what microphone somebody's using unless it really sucks. Um, and that they can, if it's close, that, you know, they can, you can generally match it. Andrew, I want to start with you on that because sure. I, I know what we use over, over at VTW. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my opinion is is specifically that it's it's not about the mic. It's it communicates you've sort of invested in your um, voiceover career. Um, that that's it's just that it could be anything. And, and so us, me, um, all of us here see TL one hundred three, and it's like great, you're good. You know, your room may not be good, but at least that's one thing that you've sort of done. And it could be other mics, right? That that will recognize. And so I think the wording of it could just be better right yeah. uh, that they're calling that just that mic out i think is a little uh yeah maybe a little silly what? but 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 just what what it communicates of what your um what you've sort of invested in and you're it's like you've you've done this you're not sort of brand new um and that may or may not matter obviously you can do other things right to kind of like research someone or you know see what they are but but i, I don't know i feel like that's the intent um is to to communicate um you know what someone has invested or where they're at as a voiceover talent. I think it's kind of like a code word, you know, if somebody replies, oh, what's a 103? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's showing a, a, a minimal amount of awareness. Yeah. yeah. You know, and say, hey, you got to be as good as this or better. Uh, what if what if the mic they actually do have is better than the 103? Then or better. 103 or better. What the hell is better? I, yeah, that's, yeah, I could give you well, in theory. Uh, that was a loaded uh, question. I, I mean, I mean like, how do you define what is better? One at a time, one at a time. Jordan, what did you say? To say no, that? I was just being. I'm like, how do you define what is better? Audio subjective yeah. at the end of the day, right? So that's that's exactly. all I'm saying, right? Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, and and that's I think that's the fascinating thing about it. Like I said, every voice is different, every room is different. So you know, what does it really matter? The idea is not to sound fantastic. If you're a good voice actor, you already sound fantastic. It's capturing you as you exist, and a better microphone is going to do that. But a better microphone is also going to reveal all of the faults in your physical environment. So, you know, for when it comes to just basic voiceover, whether you're doing auditions or whether you're doing all this other stuff, I think it's important that people, as we said earlier on, your environment is so much more important than the rest of it. I and, think when the pandemic started and everybody, it was more important for everybody's home studio to be, you know, broadcast quality. Uh, the memo went out. Yeah. <laughs> at Source Connect and Neumann 103 and all this. Um, I like a 102. It's almost half the price. And I, I, you know, some people send me a 103 and I said, eh, it's a good mic, but not everybody sounds great on it. I it agree. Could be, could be their voice, just it's not a good match or the environment. So, um, <laughs> the memo came. They they heard. Yeah. They were told. It's not right. that they can hear the difference. They were told, oh, they attended. Sure you say 103 and raw and only raw. Tell them 100% raw. Oh, and the, and the new <laughs> one, which we can talk about, is RMS between minus 18, 18 and, minus and minus 20, peaks oh, at minus 3 with that. no compression and no. Right. Limit. So they send me these tiny files. <laughs> <laughs> I normalized it to minus 20. No, that's not what they mean. We should and have a whole true. class on root mean square. We could, mm -hmm. right? They said, "What is RMS? Root mean square." Yeah, <laughs> that's as far as I go. Yeah. Oh, I hated algebra. Average, average. <laughs> average. <laughs> anyway, we got lots of room for more questions because we're gonna, we're going to carry on in the second hour with uh, tech talk. So if you got more questions, throw them in the chat rooms, and uh, Jeff Holman will get those to us. Uh, Phyllis Ford asks, uh, "What do you think about fake Ethernet?" Does it really work with Source Connect? What is she talking about? Fake I've never, heard, I've never heard of it. Hmm, maybe I've she never ever ever heard it referred to that. I've heard never. of power line Ethernet adapters. Ah, that's what she's referring to. Oh. Probably. Uh, uh, that you plug into your wall. 
Yeah. yeah. Install them a lot. Many, many times. Yeah. Well, well, that's Ethernet. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dave G asks from YouTube, uh, sort of similar to what the, the question that Paul set asked about says, I got to throw this at the panel. Does a voiceover really need a Neumann or a 416 or 416? I mean, if it sounds good, it is good. Right, George? Uh, yeah. I've, as long as you're getting paid to do that gig, it must sound pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> There's hundreds of microphones. I mean, a, a Lewitt is is fabulous you know i mean it doesn't have to be that's what i'm saying a, a, a neumann or a, a 416 i love a 416 myself and i love to record demos and spots on when the talent has 416 but here's an know. idea right listen to a sample. i'm gonna run with this one yeah. sell sleeves for your uh, <laughs> fill in the blank other condenser that slide over and it's a Neumann U87. So when, you, when you've been lying that you have a U87 for the last 17 years and, and now they have to make you be on Zoom, now you don't have to go buy a U87. Just put a, oh. you know, put a sticky note on it, U87. It, no, it, great over, idea. Faux mics. Slide it over your MXL 990. Yeah. <laughs> See if anybody <laughs> notices the difference. Just, you know, just tell them if it's a front address or a side. That, that's a great idea. Foam fo mic, you know, you've been yeah. telling people. Well, I mean, all the these years. So, so the ultimate foam mic is the, and, and, and several of you guys know this mic, the Townsend Labs Sphere L22. Uh, do I know Jordan likes this mic? Um, that's why they call it mic modeling, because they're, they're modeling. They're putting on their outfit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I bought right. one for a client last year because U87s were just not in stock. Mm-hmm. It was half the price, and the client was happy, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> Go on Reverb, and you'll find one. Yeah. yeah. Andrew, you got any thoughts on that? Because we, you know, I know you used the 416s over at mm -hmm. TD, uh, Voice Tracks West. And, yeah. uh, but does it really matter? You know, I, I tend to think that people really over-obsess about this. I got to have this fantastic mic. What do you, what do you think? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm not, uh, honestly, uh, kind of what everyone was saying, it's like, I don't really care. Like, it's, you know, but but it's somewhat what it communicates. Does it sound good? Like, does it come across? Does it sound, does it sound good? Um, and that, that ultimately is all that matters. Um, you know, some of the other things you think about with these mics is, are the TLM that, that we have here, um, uh, I think Voice Rex West bought it in 1990. Um, and um, I just got it serviced. Um, like it was sound, it was sounding a little dark to us, and we went and got it cleaned, and um, and it sort of brightened it up. It's a little TL 103 is a little dark anyway, but like it's it brightened right. it up a little bit, and um, uh, and that you know, an MXL 990 or what's that one that uh, you know that's like a hundred bucks that yeah. you like, George. Um, can you fix that? Can you repair it? Uh, Maybe like, can you take it to the repair guy and have him clean it? Is it worth it to no. have him for 50 bucks do that? Um, you know, so there's something, there's features in these mics, right. That, that you get for spending the extra money. Um, and, and if that sounds good and works for you, that's great too. So, um, sometimes that's just like a decision, you know, of like, you know, where you're at and what you want to spend and how long you want to have it. And yeah, see, I, I find that if you're talking to one of the, the, the sales reps at one of the mail order places, what we used to call mail order places. Uh, don't tell them what you want the mic for, because they will try to sell you the most expensive thing. And, uh, it's, it's usually, they have no idea what they're talking about. They just want the, like, oh yeah, you need, you need a U87 or you need this, you know, the, the, the TLM 49 or whatever, because we just happen to have them. I mean, in the Sugarland catalog, an SM7 is good for ADR and voiceover. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. Go figure. All righty. Uh, well, we're going to take another break here, and okay. uh, we got lots more questions we're going to uh, fill in during Tech Talk, so stay tuned for that. We'll be right back with uh, a little bit more of our Audio Masters Roundtable. Don't go away quite yet. Lots to come. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. 
They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's time to talk about Source, Source Connect. Source Connect. Which we already have, right? I mean, we've already been talking about Source Connect on the show tonight because, well, it comes up in practically every single conversation about recording voiceover from a home studio um, because this is what the pros use. It's plain and simple. There are other tools out there. Um, some of them are being, you know, taking, getting some traction in the pro production world. Um, but the problem is, is they just, have, well, they're 15 years behind. Source Connect has been around a very, very long time. The technology has been adopted and adapted into the production workflow by producers the world around. It's a plug-in directly into their DAW, into Pro Tools or whatever they happen to use. It's a workflow thing, everybody. And that's why Source Connect is still and shall be for probably a while king when it comes to remote recording. So you want to have it in your toolbox. Now, what does that mean? Do you have to buy it? Do you have to lease it? Do you have to rent it? Really, actually, none of the above at first. You really just want to get the system set up. You want to get the account. You want to get logged in. You want to go through the process of getting it up and running. Um, there's lots of tutorials, including on my own website at georgelee.tech. Um, and you can get yourself oriented with it so you understand how it works and what you need to do to make it work on your system. Once you've done that, you can activate it at any time. So it's fine to say you have Source Connect, even if you hasn't, haven't actu activated your, your uh, subscription yet. And yes, it could be in a subscription, or you can do a buyout if you hate subscriptions. Um, but th these are different ways you can work with it. And as long as when that session comes, you're ready to go, you're confident, you've practiced, and you know how to work it, you're off to the races. And it's the bigger gigs, the ones that pay the best. That use Source Connect, right? So, thank you, Source Elements. Is that a good enough commercial? Works right, for me. Let us know. All right, <laughs> you know how to find us. All right, thanks. We'll be right back to talk more tech with our friends right after this. You're still watching VLBS, <laughs> and we are back. Well, we're going to say goodbye for this segment anyway. Oh, uh, great guest. I mean, this is this is really what people need to hear all of this this really important information and everybody overthinks their home studio so it's good to have our good friends here to tell us what we actually need uh we've got, let's see next week on this particular show we will have it's going to be tech talk number 68 i believe and it's going to have all the same people that we have this week because we're just going to record that so if you're you're still here hang out and watch it live if you're watching this on thursday one you're probably asleep after eating all that turkey and you're missing it all but uh but next week we'll have uh, the second half of this as well um who are our donors this week oh baby listen to these names because you've heard them before and you'll hear them again thank you to all of them <laughs> uh shauna pennington baird Oh, uh, yes, Icon Productions. That oh, that's is, right. We uh, alternate on the second show. Sorry. Yeah, that's uh, Don right. Griffith. Con, yeah. Uh, Stephen Chandler. Sandra Manwiller. Robert Leadham. And Antland. And Antland Uncle Productions. Roy Productions, the guy who can't figure out how to cancel his membership. <laughs> like my dad. <laughs> Shh, don't tell him that. Anyway, also join our mailing list. I think it's really important that if you get on there, you get a notification, hopefully when I remember, uh, what we're going to be doing this week. And uh, so you're reminded that you need to watch VoiceOver Body Shop. So keep doing that. We also need to thank our amazing sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements Makers of Source Connect. VO Heroes. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Demos. Our big thanks to Jeff Holman for keeping it together in the chat room, getting all those questions in. We want more questions, guys. We got more tech to come in Tech Talk, so don't go away. Get those questions in right now if you're watching live. And uh, so, but thanks to Jeff Holman for doing a great job in the chat room. 
uh, in Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, Sue Merlino, who's sitting there going, what are all these guys talking about? Uh, getting, oh, she knows getting, more than you think you think she knows. I know. Wait, and I don't know sense. what I don't know. So <laughs> anyway, and, and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, you know, when it comes down to your, your home studio audio, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or V O B B S. Yes. Hey, you're watching live. Don't go anywhere. Have a great week, everybody.